So, namaste to everybody. Today we have with us Ganesha. So, uh, we took exercise two introduction for yesterday. So, based on the uh, discussion, if you have any reflection based on the pointers reflected in the slide, please raise your hand to share your observations. So we were discussing this particular slide yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Uh, namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, Sabhi ko. Uh, so with the yesterday's discussion that we had and uh, from the discussions that we are having, so it's uh, very true that uh, when we uh, make a response of the self and, uh, uh, and we can see that the response of the self and its fulfillment uh, is with the assumptions about the reality and the self has no choice in this matter. So uh, when we talked about this coexistence of self and body and the way our, uh, uh, the needs of both self and body are different, but at the same time, sometimes we come across certain situations uh, where we are not uh, able to, uh, you know, exactly find out uh, what could be uh, the uh, right way. Say, for example, uh, you know, the need of the self is uh, to have uh, to have conti uh, continuity of happiness and uh, harmony. And at the same time, uh, we are uh, having a relationship between one self and the other self. But many a times we see that even if this kind of a feeling we have, but when we are trying to uh, express our respect and show our relationship with others, it uh, doesn't retail, uh, I mean, revert back in the same way. So, uh, despite all efforts, but sometimes we are hurt by that. Uh, so, uh, Bhaiya, I would just like to ask that what could be the probable solution that uh, does, uh, we know that the sanskar of the other person may be uh, like uh, he needs to improve or his competence is not uh, uh, there, but uh, whatever. Uh, but this, uh, the, like everything is there. We know that we have a relationship between one self and an another self. Then why this uh, feeling of, uh, you know, uh, hurt uh, that comes to us and it makes us sometimes in disharmony. I hope I was audible. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Ultimately, what is the source of happiness for you? Uh, that is through me only. That is uh, whatever is accepted by me, uh, by the natural acceptance that I have. What is the source of happiness? Is it getting some favorable feeling from outside? Is it getting some favorable <clears throat> sensation from outside? No. Or is it my own right understanding? right feeling and right thought. What is the source of happiness for me? <laughs> yeah, my right understanding and right thoughts. Of, yes. So if it depends, if it, if my source of happiness is right understanding, right feeling and right thought in me, then it will not depend on the response or the reaction of the other. Yes, but sometimes we have, uh, like, you know, sometimes we have to uh, say uh, in connection, we have to work with the other person. Like, uh, we cannot avoid the other person. And of course, as you very rightly said, that I have I have to have that right understanding. And I do have, because I have uh, eventually uh, found out that uh, most of the time I am in harmony. It isn't that even uh, the reaction of the other doesn't uh, disturb me. But uh, still, sometimes I am disturbed. I don't know why that happens. Yeah, so the <clears throat> reason is very simple. That most of the time, I am happy on the basis of my right understanding, my right feeling and right thought. But yes. sometimes, because of some sanskar, which gets activated in me, 
because of the response or reaction of the other, I am no more with my right understanding or right feeling. My feeling has got disturbed by way of my own sanskar in <clears throat> response to the behavior of the other. That is, the behavior of the other has triggered some sanskar in me and I am going by that sanskar. And according to that sanskar, my expectation is that he should not behave like this. Right? And if he is behaving like that, then I get into that feeling of opposition with him. <clears throat> yes. Right. If that happens, then I am unhappy. So I am unhappy because of his behavior plus because of my own sanskar. These two put together. Not so, only Bhaiya, because of his behavior or her behavior. Yes. So, Bhaiya, is this a natural uh, thing or it is something unnatural? See, the way it is happening today, it is natural or it seems to be natural. Okay. Okay. We feel that, okay, you know, we don't know how these sanskars have been accumulated, but somehow I own them. And according to those sanskars, I have some expectation about the feeling from the other or the behavior of the other. And this is not falling in line with that kind of feeling or behavior. Therefore, it sounds very natural to me to get angry about it or get a feeling of opposition about it. See. But this is not natural in the right sense because when I have this wrong feeling, I get unhappy. Yes. So in that sense, it is not natural. But the way things are happening, it seems to be natural. Yes. So what we are saying that all these things are happening because we are not aware of ourselves. We are not aware of our sanskar, our feelings, right? And ultimately, we do not have this right understanding, right feeling and right thought in me. Therefore, I get unhappy. Yes. So what do I do? Till the behavior of the other person sets right, at least I can be aware of myself. Right? I can be aware of my sanskar. I can evaluate my sanskar. I can evaluate my feeling and make sure that they are in order. Yes. And if I ensure that, I can continue to be in a state of happiness despite the lack of right behavior from the other. Yes. That's right. Uh, but yeah, and sometimes in families also it happens. Supposing, uh, like, uh, I, have few re I have a relative, and uh, so uh, they are going on very well. But, uh, but, I mean, they were. But now, after a very long time, like, uh, they have a grown-up uh, daughter and everything is there. And now, suddenly, there is so much of uh, disruption that uh, they are, uh, you know, about to get divorced as well. And it's a very, uh, it's at a very later stage. So actually, I am all the time feeling that why this is happening, like uh, why this has to happen at, at this time when everything was okay till now. Yeah, everything was not okay. Everything was manageable. Mm, perhaps. Now, they have gone out of the boundary. That is the only thing. Previously, it was within the boundary. Yes. Not that everything was okay. Okay. That is what we are saying right from the beginning. Everything is okay means we have the right understanding, right feeling, and right thought for yes. our, you know, living in this existence. 
till yeah. that happens thing, everything is not right something is right something is wrong and yes. what something is right is manageable right yes so we can manage the situation with that part which is right and we get stuck with that part which is not right okay yes. and whenever such situation comes then we get stuck till that situation comes it sounds sounds okay yes yes so be a what could they probably do like what could be the solution solution ultimately that is what we are talking about the ultimate solution is that i have the right understanding and right feeling in me number 1 and i work for that and that is what we are doing yes number 2 i work to help the other to have the right understanding and right feeling and ultimately i work for everyone to have the right understanding and right feeling that is the solution yes yes but at this point of time probably they are not ready to listen maybe gradually it comes to them yes they are not ready to listen because they are not assured of our behavior mm, yes probably so if i work on myself and if i my behavior improves then maybe they will you know be ready to listen to me but there is a possibility they may have some very you know big set of sanskar regarding me so they may not be ready to listen at all or it may take times years right yes that's right this is the thing that i know that the requirement of body and requirement of self is different but as you have told that of the sanskars so sometimes when i when i see these reflections in myself uh my uh, uh sanskars or swabhav uh uh bhaiya i i may i quote geeta in this and and then i i i need your clarification on the basis of that can i do you this you can you can quote uh, yeah. we have no problem you quoting it yes to bhaiya uh, there is one shloka swabhav jen kanteya nibaddha swen karmana kartu ne chhas yan mohat karishyasya baso pitat so swabhav is the thing that Uh, uh we are, we are, we are uh, we have to do it due to uh, uh, my oh, habitual practices that i am doing and i try to get out of it i am doing these sessions sensations also but a complete uh, uh, right understanding uh, very very difficult so can 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 i I I want to uh, have a clarification between swabhav and sanskar. Uh, uh, how can I change my this uh, uh, swabhav which I have? That after uh, sometimes I again come back squared to the same situation where I started and the right understanding go jabi. So yeah. what should I do, Bhaiya? I I. sometimes i get uh, so i i think ganesh bhaiya is the suitable person for explaining this please help me yeah so <clears throat> you know when we are using words from tradition or anywhere you know yes other than the our present use yes then we have to be very clear about what reality it is talking about okay now here, right here we are we have talked about sanskar yes. and sanskar for us means that we have some assumption about ourselves but one then we have some assumption about the other person right 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 
and these are called the sanskars oh 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 correct correct bhaiya correct bhaiya okay. so i assume that i am a great person and i assume that the other person is a fool right so whenever i recall of this other person ha huh. instead of having a feeling of relationship i feel have a feeling of opposition with him wonderful wonderful thank you i got my answer you can explain it bhaiya assumption for our self is perfectly okay but assumptions for other self another person that he is a fool in initial stage i assume this then how can i uh, have the right understanding correct bhaiya correct now excellent excellent yeah let me complete yes. so when <clears throat> i have these assumptions this is what we are calling a sanskar yes yes now once our assumption has gone wrong our decision for the feeling that we will have for the other person or other unit that is likely to go wrong okay is that clear now right right bhaiya right bhai. now if that feeling goes wrong then i am likely to get into trouble with the other person first i will become unhappy and then i i am likely to react now if you look at this swabhav word which is used in geeta this swabhav is used for the sanskar and the feeling born out of my sanskar that is the meaning of swabhav there so different people have different sanskar and therefore based on their sanskar okay they are likely to respond or react uh, ji bhaiya audible uh, in, in in middle it was muted but now it is okay audible okay so i am saying that this sanskar and the response or reaction based on this sanskar is called the swabhav there ha uh, uh, ha uh, ha correct 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 now <laughs> the sense in which we are using swabhav is different uh. what we are saying is what is naturally acceptable to us is swabhav ha uh. what is not naturally acceptable to us is not our swabhav ha 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 so if wrong sanskar is there it will generate a wrong feeling which is not swabhav according to us right bhaiya absolutely right we must understand what is meant by swabhav there and what is meant by swabhav here and if we understand both then we'll be able to you know clarify what is being said and what is the meaning of it okay so ultimately right, i have to, thank you bhaiya ultimately i have to work on my sanskar i have to set it right yes so bhaiya whenever uh, we are going uh, we are imagining something and uh, from the feeling of thought then natural acceptance whenever we are moving uh, to the um, step of coexistence then um, bhaiya i want to share with you uh, that how i think in a very small uh, situation say uh, bhaiya i am uh, providing assignment to, to the students and um, and uh, also uh, have a last date of submission of the assignment now it is a common thing that uh, whatever we uh, see is that that most of the students submitted it on the uh, last day and a few students also submitted before 
and uh, there are some students always who do not submit and also we have a certain few students who cannot submit but they interacted in masses that they have genuine problems and they could not submit on the day of the last uh, last date of submission so in that case whenever i feel uh, so i do not have any feeling of unhappiness or contradiction to those students who have not yet submitted the assignments but i make it a point that whenever they are go coming for submission they must understand that um, they are uh, why why they have done that Me means i make it a point that they have to understand their self discipline and that would be helpful in their later life and at the same time uh, i had the feeling that yes whenever they will go out of my cabin they will forget these things and but at some point of time when they will go up they will have a job then if whatever i have spoken to them if they remember it then i think i am successful i have a feeling of coexistence because if they do good then it would be good for the society for the self and for the nature as a whole so in that case is my is it a right way uh, moving from the step 1 to the step 7 via <coughs> i mean <coughs> in this same situation we could had discussion with such students today the whole thing is so organized that we feel that we have no time to do that but it is useful because ultimately we want to convey to them that they have to be responsible or we have to be responsible yes that is the issue isn't it hmm. now are we able to convey this maybe not because uh, those students who do those things they they probably do the same thing again and again and those students who are always disciplined they maintain their self discipline yes so number one is that i keep my feeling in order the feeling of relationship with them that is one thing second thing is that i essentially want to convey you know certain important thing about life right so i mm -hmm. must have some regular discussion with them i should develop a platform where i can call them i can sit with them i can discuss with them i can ask questions i can ask them to reflect over it and then respond now all those things we can do mm -hmm. isn't it my experience with this students who are very irregular and indisciplined is that if we do this you know calling them sitting with them discussing with them mm. offering some tea to them if you do this discussion with them mm. most of them change very drastically mm. yes and that is a very long term change Yes, yes. Why? Yeah, that is also we can feel that one also. That feeling we have also there for the students who may be irregular in the first semester, but in higher semester after they do much good when they show good results and also they change much. We have also seen that. Why? Yeah. yeah. So ultimately, the issue is that we have to develop that right understanding, right feeling, and right thought in them. That is the main mm -hmm. issue. Hmm. Hmm. so we should work for it mm -hmm. one subject or the other subject is okay mm -hmm. so teaching one subject is an opportunity to communicate mm -hmm. that is how i would look at it and if there are 60 students in my class i can establish a good relationship with them mm -hmm. right and i can do very meaningful things you know for them by helping them to get aware of this fact that yes they have to have this right understanding right feeling and right thought mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Talk to them in any words. I am not saying use these words actually. But mm-hmm. I must be clear that my responsibility is to share this. And if this happens, then it will help him in the job and it will help him in the life, right? Mm-hmm. The family and everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I must take out time for such discussion. And the feeling of coexistence uh, is this. Um, I mean, this way of thinking is the feeling of coexistence, no, Bhaiya? Yeah. So, feeling of relationship, basically, I would say here. Okay. Feeling of relationship, which is born out of this understanding of coexistence and the harmony and the participation in the larger order. Hmm. Now I am able to see that uh, my feelings of relationship uh, fluctuate many times, but I uh, am able to observe when I am aware. Uh, then I very naturally take shift to what is right feeling, and even sometimes I miss that part. Uh, I continue for some time with a position. Yes. Uh, but then the shifts are possible. in one of the relationship i could see uh, that these fluctuations were there um, and uh, the trouble is now because of my earlier uh, mistakes out of unawareness uh, the person is now not ready even to talk to me or uh, is not ready to reply over messages also um and uh, i i am not finding it nice to uh, stay like this without talking and also i am concerned about uh, what they must be going through and uh, want to help myself and them uh, but that communication channel is completely closed so uh, now my question is uh we have thought of uh like we have heard of uh this way that we keep sending uh good wishes for that person uh how much that works that is my question sir yeah so the interesting thing is that no channel is completely closed it is always open so you don't have to worry about that part that it is completely closed okay. now what do i do given this situation that mm-hmm. there seems to be a stalemate complete block what do i do now i have to prepare myself as you said now i can see that there are you know there have been mistakes on my part in the past okay and the other person is hurt about it and even if there is no mistake from my part there person the other person can be hurt because of his own sanskar okay i mean you do something and the expectation of the other person is that okay you do right thing but do it in one particular way or mm-hmm. present it in one particular way right or if the other person is shouting at you okay you should not respond you know to it you yes, just should listen so all these assumptions can be there but it can be either way that you have made some mistakes or something has happened something you know some bad time and the other person is accumulating it now what do i do from my side i have to set things right i have to make sure that i have right understanding about myself i have right understanding about the other and i have this feeling of relationship for the other all the time so if i do this 
and if I am ready, then this channel is not blocked completely. Okay, I can find out ways. But if it is taking time, it is fine. If I do not have the wrong feeling from my side, it is not creating unhappiness to me. The problem is when I also have the wrong feeling, I get into trouble, number one. Number two, if I have the right feeling and I am in harmony and happiness, then I will be looking for the opportunity when this interaction can be started, this communication you know, can be you know, initiated. And when I initiate this, and if the other person reacts, that is the crucial time when I have to check whether I also get into reaction or I am able to ensure that feeling of relationship for the other. And all my thought is in relation to how give you know rest to the other, how help with the other, how help the other to get relaxed, right? Come out of his reaction. That is the best time. So if we are, are able to ensure the right feeling there and respond properly then things will start improving. Then things will start improving. And that option is always available. But from my side, I can ensure the right understanding and right feeling and therefore I can be in a state of harmony and happiness. That nobody is taking away from me. So first I do that and then I look for the right context or right opportunity where I can, you know, interact with the other person. It is never fully closed. So that we should not worry. Sir, I have two questions. First, yeah. How, how to understand and fulfill the relationship with others. Others means I mean both um, human being and other material things also. Uh, material uh, or conscious units. And how to have it very precisely and concisely. This is my first question. Should I tell the second question or I will what after, no, after you, this you, you repeat repeat your first question how do you uh, we concisely and precisely understand relationship yeah. with everything including yeah. human being and other things yeah. yeah this is the question no if you want to make it very concise the answer is that we should be able to see that we are already in relationship with every unit in existence by yes, way of yes. coexistence, we are already in relationship with every unit in existence, whether it is consciousness or material. Yeah, yeah. In other okay. words, we we are in coexistence. We are already in coexistence. We only have to understand it. So this is one thing. Yeah. Second thing is that if I understand this and if I have this feeling in me, then it leads to harmony and happiness within me. Yes. This is second important thing about relationship. Yes. Third is that if I have this right feeling in me, that is feeling of relationship, then all my thought, all my expectations will be in the line of how to fulfill this relationship with the other. 
and therefore all my behavior will also be in accordance with this relations. Yes, this third third uh, thing it was not um, audible because it was breaking. Voice was breaking. Third thing. Yeah, I said my behavior will also be in accordance with this feeling of relationship. Yes, yes. So I said three things. If I have the right understanding, that is understanding of coexistence, then I feel and I can see that I am related to everything, every unit. Yes. Hmm. If I can see this, then I have the feeling of relationship for every unit. Hmm. If I have the feeling of relationship, my thought and expectation will also be in line with this feeling of relationship. Hmm. Then fourth thing I said, my behavior will also be in accordance with this feeling of relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And so my second is, question is, yes. yeah. So this second is, what question is, is, what is there for yeah, the yeah. relationship with human being as well as with rest of nature? Yes, yes. Thank you. Second, second question that uh, to to know the fine line between knowing and assuming. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Fine line is very simple. Am I able to see it directly? If I am able to see it directly, I know it. If I am not able to see it directly, and I am able to accept it or deduce it without directly seeing it, then it is an assumption. Yeah, yeah. I'll take the example that, you know, we have been talking about this as coexistence of self and body. Right? Discussion yeah. is there. And you keep listening to it and keep thinking of it. It seems logical, right? Yeah. So there must be not only body. So this is one way step. Second is that I start observing the self directly. I start observing the imagined self. Right. And I can see that, yes, it is there. So there is a big difference. When I have somehow concluded that the self is there, without directly seeing it, is one thing. And when mm -hmm. I am able to see the self directly, so that is the difference between knowing and assuming. Okay, sir. Very fine. So Thank you. Thank going you. through exercise one, two. Going yeah. through exercise two, we are trying to see the self directly and also see the interaction between the self and the body directly. Hmm. So we are trying to know rather than assume. If you look at this slide, which talks about human being as coexistence of self and body. Right. It is a very important slide. In fact, if you look at the whole uh, uh, content of UHV, this is a very major shift okay, in our way of looking at our own self. So till now we thought that we are the body. Now we are trying to explore this fact that we are not just the body, but coexistence of self and the body. The body is there too, but self is also there. The material part is there and the consciousness part is there. And we can look into these two directly and verify for ourselves that yes, both the body is there and the self is there 
and a human being is coexistence of the self and the body. So very important, you know, uh, observation. So we have been discussing about this in ESB2 course, ESB1 first and then ESB2. And now what we are doing in morning session is very significant, very important. What Devi Prasadji was just asking, what is the difference between knowing and assuming? So through USB 2, USB 1, we were able to deduce or reach to a conclusion that it seems true that we are not just the body. There is something more than the body, something more than the material. There is some role of consciousness in our existence. And therefore, it was seeming plausible that we are the coexistence of self and body. But we have not seen the self, we have not seen the interaction with the body and all that directly. So through exercise one and two, we are now trying to see the self directly. We are trying to see the body directly. We are trying to see the interaction between the self and the body directly by the self. So this is very interesting. A very major step. And that is why this morning session is making so much of difference in our life. Because now we are able to see directly our own self. We are able to see the self. We are able to see the activities of the self. We are able to see the imagination that is going on the desire, thought, and expectation in the self. The desire which is in the form of feeling, we are able to see. We are also able to see that depending upon the feeling that we have, we are in a state of harmony or disharmony, happiness or unhappiness. We can also see that when the feeling is a feeling which is naturally acceptable to me, I am in a state of harmony and happiness. If this feeling is not naturally acceptable to me, then I am in a state of disharmony and unhappiness. So all this I can now see directly through exercise one and exercise two. particularly. Exercise one. So very significant. Initially, I was going by the assumption that I am the body through ESP one and this assumption was it was the material and the consciousness. Now, through morning session, we are trying to observe these things directly. We are trying to observe the self by the self in exercise one. And then we are trying to observe the body and the interaction between the self and the body through the exercise two. So all these observations that was made in HP one and two about the self and about the body, in terms of its need, in terms of its activities, in terms of its response, right? All those things can now be directly observed by the self. And that is what we are trying to do in exercise two. So we are trying to move from assuming that we are not just the body, but coexistence of self and the body, from there, we are trying to move to know that we are not just the body. 
to know that we are the self and the body and the coexistence of the two. And if we continue to observe the self and the body directly, we can also observe that in all this interaction with the body, it is the self which is taking the decision. The body is only used as an instrument. So whenever there is a transaction between the self and the body, this transaction is in the form of instruction to the body or the self reading some sensation of, from the body. This is the interaction. But both this transaction of information between the self and the body is decided by the self and not by the body. So such important observations can be directly made by the self. Regarding itself and regarding its interaction with the body. So I can know these things which I had concluded by way of, you know, some inference, some logic, some suggestions from outside. Now I'm able to see them directly. Now I'm able to see them directly and know them. Self directly. Exercise two is very significant. The body directly and the interaction between the self and the body. And of course, interaction with the whole world. Exercise two, I can see my interaction or interaction of the self with the body. I can also see the interaction with the world around, with the other human being as well as with the rest of nature. So, very, very significant. Right? It is a life-changing kind of effort. And I feel that this is the reason why this morning session exercise one and two is making so much of difference in our own life and also difference in our interaction with other members of the family with the rest of nature. So this is one observation which I wanted to make regarding exercise one and exercise two. Yes. If there is any question on this observation, we have five minutes, I can respond to it. Uh, sir, I was discussing yesterday with Kumar Bhaiya uh, yes. regarding uh, Sanskar and competence. Yes. So, like we discussed, transfer uh, may be based on knowing and may, may be based on assuming. And competence, the current level of mind with which we can see harmony, relationship, and coexistence. So, transfer yeah. uh, triggers competence or competence improves the transfer. Means, how can we? Uh, see that relationship. Yeah, the way you have defined competence, the yes. feeling, your thought, all those put together. Sir, your uh, then, words have missed. Few words were not audible due to breaking of words. Now I said, audible. Hmm. competence, is it now audible? 
Yes, yes, sir. Now perfectly. Is it now audible, Sara Prashna ji? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Now it is. I was saying that when you say when you say competence, then it will include your sanskar, and if you go still above, your understanding, your sanskar, your feeling, your thought, all that will be included in your competence. Right? For example, if you have a sanskar of being in relationship, being in harmony, then whenever you interact with somebody, you will have a feeling of relationship with the other person. Right? And when you have this feeling of relationship, you will always think in terms of how to fulfill that relationship. And one of the aspects could be communicating with the other person. Now, when you are trying to communicate with the other person, then you must have the knowledge of that language. Right? Now, if you do not have the practice of that language, then what will happen? Then you will not be able to share with the other. You will not be able to come, you know, communicate. So you will say that, okay, I have a good sanskar, I have a good feeling. I'm thinking about how to fulfill relationship. But because of my lack of the use of that language, I'm not able to communicate. The sanskar is okay, the feeling is okay, but that competence is not there because of not being acquainted with that language. And this language is part of this imagination, isn't it? So I'm not used to that language. Or let us say I yes. Yeah. Is that clear to you, Saraji? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. So uh, competence will include everything. Sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Continue, please, sir. Yeah. Yes. I said competence will include sanskar and your imagination altogether. Yeah, that is what I had to say. Thank you. Namaste, Namaste. Namaste, to all. Namaste, Namaste. Uh, Baya, uh, before I start this UHV journey, I thought that uh, the uh, self and the body, the self, I thought it is a pran. Pran is there inside the body. So when the pran is go out, the body, we called it a dead body. After I joined that UHV, I understood that self is a conscious unit and the body is a the material unit. And both are coexist. And uh, the coexistence, when I uh, I understood till this uh, today, uh, that. Uh, for example, the pen, pen is a material and I am a self. I use that pen whenever I want to write and whenever I don't want to write or use it, I keep it away or keep it aside. So like that, the self, uh, it is not inside that body. It use that body whenever it is needed and whenever it is not needed, it get, it kept aside. Uh, that much I understood. Then how it's there in the body, how it is connected with the body, that that word, <laughs> that link, I am not getting, sir. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that is true. That you have assumed these things, but you do not have the direct observation of it. Yeah, sir. So that is what we are trying to do in exercise one and exercise two. Mm -hmm. Like exercise two, now we are trying to work and see mm. how we are interacting with the body. Mm. Okay. Mm. Like, as you said, 
when I want to use this body, I give some instruction to the body. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of this sensation taking place in the body. I don't read all of them, but some of mm -hmm. them I feel important. So I read those sensations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, that trend I, I... Yeah, so all this now we can directly observe and see. Mm -hmm. Number one, we wanted to see that we are there as self. In exercise mm -hmm. one, that is what we did. Mm -hmm. Now with the background that we are the self, now mm -hmm. we are interacting with the body. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to understand how this interaction mm -hmm. is taking place in the body, with the body. Mm -hmm. So the interaction between the self and the body is what we are trying to understand through exercise two. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we will do that in exercise two, step mm -hmm. one, two, three, all those things. Mm -hmm. Then we will see that, you know, whenever we feel like making use of the body, we make use of the body. Mm -hmm. Right? When we don't feel like making use of the body, the body anyway, some activity in the body is going on, but I'm not involved. Yeah. But... And if we observe this very consistently, we will realize that hardly 1% of the time we are interacting with the body. Yeah, but most of the time I am not aware about my body. Yes. I am involved in the thought process only. Yes. Uh, yeah. Most of the time I am busy with myself. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yes. That I also can able to see. Uh, All this we will be able to see by direct mm -hmm. observation. Mm -hmm. 